Hello people, welcome to today's video. Today's topic is going to be joining data using the deep layer package. As a data scientist, one has to extract data from multiple sources and join them together before one can perform any analysis or data visualization. So let's look at how can we do this operation of joining different data sets together using the deep layer package provided to us by R. DeepLayer is a widely used package in R for data cleaning and transformation. It has functions that help to perform a number of operations on data, such as summarize, aggregate, join, mutate, select, and filter. And this list is not exhaustive. There are other functions also under this package. Today, however, we will focus only on the join functions. So before we go and take a look at some code, let's review what are the different types of joins. If you have worked with SQL before, you probably already are familiar with the different types of joins, but let's review them. So here on the left hand side, I have a Venn diagram. There are two circles. One is yellow color called dataset one. Another is blue colored called dataset Two, and these two data sets have some overlap and that is represented by the green color section. So now let's assume that I want to perform an inner join on these two data sets. I want to join them together using the inner join operation. So then what will be my output in that case? Well, in that case, my output will be those records which are common between data set 1 and data set 2 or in other words my output will be that overlap green colored section if i want to perform a left join once again assuming i want to do a left join between this data set 1 and data set 2 and because my data set 1 is on my left side my output will be my entire data set 1 and the overlapping data between data set 1 and data set 2. So that's the green section. That will be my output. And if I do a right join, it is exactly same as the left join, just that in this case, my output will contain the data set which is on the right side, that is the blue data set and the overlapping records. Uh, and then if I do a full join, then I will get the yellow, the blue and the green. I'll get everything. Now, all these cases I explained assuming there is an overlap. If there is no overlap and I do an inner join, I will get nothing in return, right? Because there is no overlap. And then there is something called semi join. So what's semi join? So if I am joining two data sets which have some overlap, then I will, I will get the green section which is the overlap section. But from that, the records of data set 2 would be taken out. So I will only get those records which have an overlap and which are present in data set 1. I won't get the overlap records from data set 2. And then if I do an anti-join, what I will get is the yellow data set and sub, uh, from it, the green, the overlap records would be subtracted. So I will, I will only get the yellow part in this uh, data set one without the overlap part. So these are different types of joins that can be performed uh, using this deep layer function. Okay guys, we are here on our studio. The very first step now is to go ahead and attach the DeepLayer library to our studio. If you have not already, then first go ahead and install the package for DeepLayer. And once you have done that, then go ahead and attach the library to our studio. Then the next step here, I have our creation of 
three data frames. Uh, the first one is called student profile, the next one is called location data, and the third one is called ethnicity data. This is just some sample data that I put together. Let's run this part of the code and see how each of these three data set uh, look like. So uh, the first one I have is the ethnicity data. So this one is nothing but two columns, one that is called ethnic code, it contains some codes in it. And then there is another column which is called ethnicity description. So uh, it carries the description for each code. The next one I have is a location data. It contains some student IDs and their respective locations. Third one I have is called student profile. So it has the student ID, first name, last name, gender, major, and ethnic code of five unique students. So that's all the data that I have. And I'm going to use these three data sets to see how can we use our join functions. So the first join function we are going to try here is called the left join. So to use this function, just go ahead and type left underscore join, give the names of your two data sets that you want to join, and then give the column based on which you want to make the join, right? So this is the very basic uh, type of left join that you can do just with one common column. Um, so like we saw, while doing left join or right join, we have to be careful about which data set is our left data set and which one is our right data set because all the records of the left data sets, uh, data set would be retained when we are doing a left join and all the records of the right data set would be retained when we are doing a right join. So this is a left join and student profile is the data set that we have on left and ethnicity data is the data set that we have on our right. So all the records of my student profile data set would be retained and then those records which are overlapping, they will be retained. So all I want to do actually is to just attach the ethnic descriptions of these ethnic codes, you know, and that's a very real life problem. Generally, a half of our data is in one file, another half is in another file. So it becomes really hard to compare and see what's going on. So we decide to let's join them all together, have them all in one place, and then we can better analyze it, right? So here my ethnic code is here, but my description is in another table, which makes it really hard for me to understand what each ethnic code means. So I want to attach that description also into this file. So that's what is my goal and that's what I want to do. I want to retain all my student records. I don't want to delete anything, but I want to add a new column that is the ethnicity description. So that's my goal and I want to do that by using this left join statement. So let's try it out and see what happens. So I have run my code and now I'm going to open my output data set, right? So this is my output data set. And now I can see that all my five student ID records, uh, student records are retained. I can go back to my student profile data set. So I have five records there. And here also I have five records, all the names, gender, major, all are taken as is ethnic code. Uh, what I have new here now is the ethnicity description. So I have, um, for ethnic code one, I have the ethnicity description as white. For three, I have Asian. What I don't have is the ethnicity description for ethnic code four. Now, why is that? That's because there is no ethnic description for any ethnic code called four in this ethnicity data table, right? We have the ethnic code four here, but it is not present in this table. So that's why, because we did a left join, so all my records from my left data set, that is my student profile data set has been retained along with only those data which are common between the two, right? 
this record 4 was had nothing common between student profile and ethnicity data so that's why that one did not get added here and instead we just have an na here the other rows did have a match one and three had matches uh, because their one and three are present in this table so they got populated they got joined correctly right so that's how a left join will work now let's go and try the right join so here the syntax is exactly same just that instead of left underscore join i'm using right underscore join and this time student profile is my right um, uh, data set and uh, uh, location data sorry this time uh, location data is my right data set and student profile is my left data set and i'm joining it by student underscore id which is the common column between the two data set let's see so in location also i have student id in student profile also i have student id so i can join the two data sets on this co common column so let's do that and see what do i get okay so this is my output so because this is a right join and location was my right data set so all the columns from my location data have been retained so let's see so we had five columns we had uh, one zero zero one two three four and eight uh, and here we do have one zero zero one two three four and eight and i have the locations so all the data from my right data set have been retained but what is not retained is this student id because in my student profile data set there is no student id that is 1008 so that's why here i have nothing populated against it right it is all nas and what else is missing here i have one record 1005 uh, you know which is also not present in my location data right here there is no student id called 1005 so even that is missing right so like we saw in the venn diagrams the records which are matching are retained and all the records from the right data set are retained anything for which there was no match na was populated so that's how the right join works and the next one we have is inner join and this one again very simple syntax just inner underscore join and then we are joining the same two data set like we saw before student profile and location data and we are joining them on the student id and this time only our um, records which are present in both the data set they should be retained so let's see if we get that or what happens okay uh, so i have one two three and four student id so in my location i have one two three four so eight and five which are not matching so they have been excluded they have been ignored and only those four records which are matching are overlapping have been taken into consideration one two three and four and here also i have one two three and four so those four records are what i get so even here you can see that i have four observations so that worked fine now let's go ahead and see our full join so full join was where everything would get joined you know nothing would get dropped so here our data set got created with six records so let's see what's in there so now surprise we have Record number 1005, which was previously not there when we did a right join. We have that now. It just has the location as NA. And we also have record number 1008. It has the location data, but there is no student, other student information. But we have retained all the records that were there in the student profile as well as the location data. So that's how a full outer join looks like, right? So now what is semi-join? So semi-join is where we get the rows of X that have a match in Y. So here X or our left data set is student profile. Y 
is our uh, right data set ethnicity data and we are going to join it by ethnic code and let's see how the output looks like okay so by definition i should get the rows of x that have a match in y so i have um, between ethnicity data and student profile my match are the ethnic code one and three right four is not present one and three four is not present so i will get returned only those rows of x which have a match in y so which are row number one two four and five because three does not have a match in ethnicity data so i won't have that returned so that's what I get. I get row number 1001, 2, 4, and 5. I don't get 1003. And I can compare this with how my left join looked like. So in my left join, I had all uh, five records, but here I had N populated against uh, this record. So I was getting this record in output, but I was getting that with ethnicity description as n but instead if you do a semi join that entire record will be dropped so that's the difference between semi join and left join so if somebody asks you in an interview so now you can tell that if it is a left join then the record from the uh, left data set would be retained with the new column as n but if it is a semi join that entire record will be dropped if record or records would be dropped if they do not have a match in the right data set or the Y data set, right? So that's how a semi join works. And that brings us to uh, the last type of join, which is the anti join. So uh, what, what is that? So that is return rows of X that do not have a match in Y, right? So it's the opposite of what we saw here in semi join. So return the rows of x that don't have a match in y and here also very simple syntax anti underscore join our x or left data set is a student profile and our y or right data set is ethnicity data and we're joining by ethnic code so let's run that and see what do we get okay so we got that one record in x like 1003 which did not have a match in y which was our uh, ethnic code number four right so that's the uh, one because we don't have ethnic code number four here in the ethnicity table so no match was found for it and we got that returned so guys that's all the different types of uh, joints uh, that i wanted to discuss in today's video all right guys so that brings us to the end of this video hope you learned something about the dplyr package and how can we perform different types of joins using it i request you to go ahead and try out all the join functions on your own play around with different types of data set and see how the output looks like i can tell you for sure that i have used all of these different join statements in my work so they will be very useful to you so please learn them and if you like this video don't forget to give give us a thumbs up follow us on facebook and subscribe to our channel on youtube if you already have not and please continue to watch our channel um, and we will be bringing you a lot of videos in future thank you so much